Welcome back to Rachel's Whimsical Arts and my next art lesson. Um, my name is Miss Rachel Simpson and I am going to experiment with painting with something you can find outside. I bet you can guess what it's going to be. Uh, it's springtime so people are gardening and exploring outside and planting things and looking at bulbs and gardens. Perfect time to play with dirt in a different kind of way besides planting things. We're going to take some dirt that I've collected and you can collect in your yard or in your garden or in uh, plants areas around your house or your home. Um, I just took a shovel full and put it in a plastic bag and I labeled it for different parts of around my house. So I have one that is a tree line east side of the house, uh, one that's front side of the house, the north side, and uh, this is the south side by a creek bed. So I wanted to get different kinds of dirt. Um, the reason being is because you can paint with pigments and things that you find in nature. Um, back in the day, before we had paints in the stores to purchase and paint with, we had to make our own pigments and find them in nature. Whether it was um, okra or a mud, or it was uh, a blue from a flower like indigo, <laughs> um, or maybe pigments from rocks. Then we had to use mortar and pestle and turn it into paint. So here we're going to talk about and how to paint and test your paints before you do anything with them. So I have a few brushes with me that I'm willing to experiment with and sacrifice to dirt for painting. And then we're gonna try and paint a picture. Okay, so first I had to take my dirt and I had to label it so I knew where it was so I could remember what color was from where on my jars. And then I added water and I mixed it up with like a spoon um, or a fork to get it like pretty smooth. I took out all of the uh, roots or pebbles because I don't want it to be that gritty or bumpy. I just want it to be the, the dirt. Now I also made a paper that shows measurements of basically two by two squares for a grid. So I can test my paint and see what it looks like with more water or less water from darkest to lightest. So I'm gonna have basically shades or tints from light to dark or from dark to light uh, to see what it looks like before I paint a picture with it, which I am gonna do. That's my, that's my goal is to paint a picture with it. So you could make your own grid on a piece of paper. I'm using thick paper that's um, for drawing and mixed media. It's mixed media paper by Canson. Uh, and it does hold up to paints, watercolors, drawing, it's nice. Also art journals, if you have an art journal with Canson, mixed media, that works too. Okay, so I've got my water, I've got my mud, my dirt that I've turned into mud, and I've labeled them. So see how I labeled this? I'm not sure if you can see that very well, so let me get a marker. And where is my marker? I'm gonna write the labels in dark pen so you can see it, okay? So here we go. So tree, line, front of house, creek, bed. Now you could just make it easier and just say east, which sides of the house it is, north, south. Okay, there you are. Now you can see it better probably. Um, so now let's paint with the tree line. So first I'm just gonna take this thick, it's kind of, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it is a little runny, okay? But I could have made it thicker. I just didn't want to make it too thick. So we'll see how it goes. So here is, in my two by two square, I'm gonna paint this. And the reason I'm painting this in the two by two square is because I want 
to have consistency in my colors when I use this um, to paint my picture with. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm gonna add some water. Here's what I'm gonna do, kind of like watercolors. You can add water. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water at the top. You can add water to your paper first. And the other way would be, um, and then add your color. The other way would be that I add more water to my cup like this. I would get this cup here and I would add a little bit more water and I would take some of my dirt like this and I can add more water to make it thinner. Maybe I need a little bit more. This is an experiment. So we're just playing around with this to see how it goes, okay? So here, I added more water in this one. We'll see how that goes. Whereas this one right here has nothing but mostly it's, it's, the, it's the mud, it's the dirt. Okay, so for this one, I'm just gonna keep adding water to it to make it a little thinner and thinner and dilute it, the color. I'm making it thinner each time, okay? So you can definitely see the change from the second one to the third square, right? Okay, so here's, let's add a little more water. And we're gonna stir it with my paintbrush for the square right here. Okay. Now the idea is to do this for everyone. And you might be thinking, oh, why? Well, painters and artists have to, oops, I need more water, have to test out their paints before they, with the values from darkest to lightest before they paint with it, because it helps them figure out how to mix colors together and how to make their picture and their painting look even better. So instead of drawing with a colored pencil, heavy to lightest to see the lightest shade to the darkest shade, we're doing it with paint or pigment. In this case, we're gonna do mud. But the nice thing about using dirt as a paint pigment is this is something that's outside. You can get in nature. You can find yourself some colors that might be different than normal. If you don't have paint at home, this is another way to, do, to try it out and to think, you know, think what it would have been like to paint and learn how to make pigments and paints when we didn't have stores to buy them. This is a nice activity to do at home and you can still um, enjoy yourself. Ooh, this is really dark. Can you see how dark this is compared to the other one? That's the other reason why I'm showing you this grid. So before you paint your picture, I'm suggesting that you do something like this to give yourself a variety of colors so you know from darkest to lightest, I'm gonna make my shades and tints. Okay, so now I added more water to this for the second one. Here's the second one. Okay, the third one, a little more water. I'm just dribbling it in there. If I wanted to be really accurate, I could take an eyedropper, otherwise known as a pipette, and I could just do one or two squeezes of water into the cup at a time. But I am pouring a tiny bit each time instead, because that's a little quicker this time than me digging out my eyedroppers, pipettes. Okay, so it's really pale compared to the first one. That's interesting, because it was really dark at the start, wasn't it? All right, last one for this color, which is the front house, the north side. After I do this next row, and I'm gonna go quicker, I'm gonna show you what you can do to paint with it, okay? All right, so there's that one. Now let's do the third one. I'm sorry if that makes a funny sound. Okay, first we're gonna paint with the creek bed mud at the top. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's a nice color. 
So yes, we are gonna be painting mostly with brown for this experiment, but I have, at the end of this video, stay tuned, because I have the results of the watercolors that I made last time with a homemade watercolor recipe. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. So that'll be some color to try out too. So when I make paints like this and I experiment, I just have fun with watching how it changes from darkest to lightest because it's gonna make, it's gonna help and determine how I paint my picture later from dark to light tones. Now, if I wanted to have, how many squares do I have for each one? I have five. If I wanted to have five shades of this, or tones of this brown for the creek, creek bed, uh, creek bed, then I would need to have five cups for each one. Okay, there's that square. Now, last one, a little more water, and I'll show you what we can paint with it, okay? This will be pretty fun. This is pretty pale. I'm stirring as I paint with it, notice, because this is dirt. So there's some little grit and chunky bits that I have to stir in before I can paint with it. All right. So it's a good idea to stir your brush in the cup of water with pigment each time as you paint with it. Okay. So there are my, this is my test page to see the shades from darkest to lightest. And I really like the fact that this color is much different than this one. I think that the Creek Bed South is really similar to the front of the house, the north side. Um, there's a tiny bit of a change of color, but not a ton. I'm gonna raise this up so you can see it a little closer. See that? It's, it's interesting. I really, I think this is really fun to see. And it's an experiment, so. Little did you know, or maybe you didn't, maybe you did or didn't, but I knew it. <laughs> Science and math go hand in hand with art a lot of times. I had to use math to do my measurements for my grid with a ruler for two by two inches. And now I'm using some science to make these pigments. Okay, so I am going to scoot this over because I have to have room for my drawing and my painting to show you next, okay? So carefully move that over without tipping it. Oh good, no mess. So I drew the start of a butterfly. And um, if you want to do any kind of animals that make you think of the garden, that's what I was going for was insects and animals that live in the garden with the plants. And um, I wish I had a pot, like a flower pot in front of me, but I don't. So instead I have a jar that I was going to draw and paint as well, okay? Now glass and jars and vases and things like that are nice because you can see reflections in them and shadows. If you really don't wanna do a jar, you could get a flower pot um, and paint that instead uh, or a mug. Um, but I'm going to do a couple more things. I didn't finish drawing all that, but you don't need to see all of it. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna draw still life. I'm gonna look at my, my, my jar right in front of me and I'm going to draw loose straw, freehand, the jar, the mason jar. I'm not gonna draw all the details, but I am gonna draw some of the things so you can see. Look, there's a piece of dirt around my hand. Oh, that's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm just gonna draw some of the steps so you can see what you might wanna look for. Now, to be fair, if I wanted to get this to look very realistic, I would probably quietly work on this for half hour to an hour of time. Whereas you and I are looking at this just as, as uh, an exercise and then you're gonna create your own, okay? 
Now I am gonna leave some of those reflections that I see, but I'm not gonna do all of the details. So I see some reflections here and reflections here. Okay, so there's just a jar. I'm not gonna finish it. I'm just gonna show you the basics. The reason why is because I wanted to show you the next step. This is kind of fun. We can start to paint with these colors. So I know that my tree line is darkest. No, it's lightest. My darkest might be the, the north side of the house. So I'm gonna use my, let's see, creek bed is the south side, north, and this is east. So I'm gonna use my north side for the darkest. I'm gonna use my east side for the lightest. So, and if I want it to be even lighter, remember you got a jar over here with a cup of water to make, so we should, we should make, make sure that we start with the lightest shade first. And the reason I say that is because if you start with the lightest shade, you can work your way up and get to a darker shade, okay? So the lightest part would be around my jar. Okay, now I'm using the jar that has the, the lightest with the water in it that I added. You can also dip your brush in the cup of water, just like a watercolor, and add a little bit of water there. In fact, the jar is pretty see-through, so I'm probably gonna have a lot more water than I am of the pigment from the mud. So here's what I'm doing. I am adding water to this part and then I'm gonna add the lightest shade. Here we go. So after you've added some colors, now you can do, you can do anything. You could even do a flower. If you wanna paint a flower, go for it. Um, you can also choose to draw or paint um, a flower pot or maybe something else like a flower bush out in the yard that makes you think of um, springtime, which is what I was going for right now. I really, I really love spring. It helps me relax when I'm outside or when I'm looking and smelling at the flowers and the trees, going for a walk and just enjoying the moment outside in nature and just feel, feel calm some fresh air. So that's my inspiration for this painting. Notice I'm using a smaller brush right now and I'm just adding water to my butterfly. Now that means this picture will be in shades of brown. Yes, it will be. But you can still have fun with experimenting with the brown tones. Um, I'm gonna only paint this much of the wing and I'll show you the finished painting next video that I upload, okay? So this is gonna be part one of two. You could put more than one brown in there. That's the other thing that's kind of cool. So here we go. All right, so I'm gonna pause with painting with the brown paints and I'll show you the results in the next video, part two of this uh, painting. Now, the next thing, oop, there goes the water. The next thing that I wanted to show you though was from our last class session, we painted and learned how to make paints with things found, um, making your own watercolor paints and using things like, uh, the Paws egg dye kits for this. That's what this one was painted with, which is pretty fun. I mean, it's very vivid and bright. It's really nice looking. And then we made, and we painted, we drew a bird, and we made these homemade paints. Well, these paints, guys, are pretty cool looking. Here's another bird drawing that I did. The reason why I think these paints are pretty cool is because you can take your paint 
I'm gonna get this clean water now. You can take your paint that you've made and it takes 24 hours to set and you can just, and it's like a hard palette of watercolor paints, similar to like the Crayola paints. See how I have to add water to it? Once I add water to it, then I've got some color on my brush to start painting. Look at that vivid yellow. I did use uh, color food coloring. Oh wow, that is so bright. You can also experiment when you make your own watercolors in the previous video, you can look that up, um, by mixing your colors together, you know? And as you can see, it's acting like a watercolor. Now, I don't know if this worked out to make brown. I tried to make a brown, but it kind of looks like a dark purple. Let's see what that is. Yeah, that's a purple. Maybe this is the one. Could be gray. Okay, so this gray color turned into, I was trying to make it like a brown, turned into like a really vivid green. And that is some of the experimenting with the watercolor paints. Okay, so this is just a follow-up to show you what you can do with making your own watercolor paints and how they can work. They look really nice and they're fun to play with. I hope you enjoyed this segment of our uh, of my lesson for learning how to paint with materials that you can find around your home. And in this one, it's, it's dirt inside your flower beds, but don't pick your parents' flower beds. They might be upset about that. Ask permission first if you're a kid. Um, do it with your family as an activity together because you won't need very much dirt. There's not much inside my cup. It's just like a spoonful. Okay, well, thank you for joining me at Rachel's Whimsical Arts. And I hope that you come back to the next one and then I can show you the results of the painting with mud and see what that looks like when it's all done. I'm excited to see what you come up with and please feel free to leave questions or comments below and you can find me on uh, online in this YouTube video on Instagram and Facebook with uh, Rachel's Whimsical Arts and my website is rachelsimpsonart.weebly.com. Anyways, I appreciate you being here and you have a great one. Thank you so much. Be kind and let's shine.